I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though they die. And everyone who has life and is committed to me in faith shall not die forever. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all here to St. Saviour's this afternoon on behalf of the family uh, to say a special welcome to everybody as we remember our sister Jean. We pray for her today. We remember her um, impact on our lives. We mourn her passing and we gather together with one another to support one another. <laughs>
We turn together to Psalm 139. As you're comfortable, we'll recite it together. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all consolation, in your unending love and in your mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. God, show compassion to your people in our sorrow. Be our refuge and our strength to lift us from the darkness of grief to the peace and the light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us, conquered death, and by rising again, restored our life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet him, and after our life on earth, be reunited with our brothers and sisters, where every tear will be wiped away. We ask this all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll have our first reading. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all the things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, Jesus says, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I come to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
couple words of reflection on some of our readings today, some of what we've heard so far in the liturgy. I think one of the strangest things about the Christian life is that in many ways the Christian life is a life that is full of contradictions. It's hard to understand what that looks like sometimes in practice, but I think it's true nonetheless. We are a people who proclaim love for those who hate us, who seek joy in the midst of sorrow, and who find hope in the pit of darkness. For almost 2,000 years now, this orientation towards the world has been fed by words just like these ones that we just read out of Matthew's Gospel, what we call the Beatitudes. A beatitude is a vision of heaven, a vision of happiness, of joy, something that seems to be in short enough supply these days, even in our better moments, but which can be especially hard to find lacking on a day of mourning like today, when we remember the life and the death of our sister Jean. And yet I think that's what makes this reading so powerful, and I think that's the reason why it's endured for about 2,000 years now. The Beatitudes find joy in the world, but they find joy in the strangest of places. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus says. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who are persecuted. All of these groups of people who would be otherwise so justified, so incredibly justified in finding difficulty in their lot in life. Jesus somehow calls them blessed. Not, you will be blessed, but you are blessed here and now. By the same token, a funeral generally isn't somewhere you'd expect to go to find great hope or great joy. There's a weightiness to funerals, which I think is entirely appropriate. They are, after all, one of the few places left in our world where it's okay to feel sad, to grieve. In a funeral, we give ourselves the space that we need to feel all the things that we need to feel. We consecrate this place and this time and this community as holy ground, trusting that whatever things we might be feeling, whatever emotions might be going on inside of us, these are the ones that are placed there by God. On a day like this, when we come together to mourn the loss of a mother, grandmother, friend, we come knowing that ultimately none of us can escape the power of death in this world. And so we walk together through the valley of the shadow of death. On a day like this, we stand together with loved ones, with a community of support there beside us, either in person or virtually. We insist that in the darkness of grief, nobody stands alone. In this moment, we are living icons of the love that God has for each and every one of us. On a day like this, we gather together to commit the soul of our beloved sister Jean to God. We recognize that pain and death are real, but we also proclaim on a day like today, loud and clear, that death is not the end. God's love reaches down even into the grave and back again. In the face of death itself, we proclaim our belief that God is more powerful and that somewhere, somehow, we might not understand how or where there is new life to be found. That right there is the heart of the Beatitudes. It's when we realize that the love of God overturns the order even of life and death itself. It's the hope we proclaim that life will in fact come out of death. That light shines all the brighter when it shines in the midst of the darkness. That celebration feels all that much lighter and more beautiful when it comes out of mourning. You might not feel that today. That's fine. Trust in the promise nonetheless that even out of sorrow, new joy can be found. I've only known Jean for the past two years, but I think that in the latter years of her life, she was aware of the hold that the darkness of the world could take upon her. I think given the conversations I had with her, especially after the loss of her beloved Jimmy, the church 
in particular, this building, this place served as a reminder of a love that she'd lost. Nonetheless, her faithfulness brought her back here to this place over and over and over again. Every one of the conversations that we had centered on her family and the deep love and dedication that she bore for all of you, even when it was hard to express it or make it known. I think in that there was some grace for her, the reassurance that life continues to grow even when our own joys begin to fade. She wished the world for her family. And so today, with hope in our wearied hearts, we send Jean home to the joy of her dimmy, to the loving embrace of God, her creator. But we carry a piece of her as well with us out into the world, a light that will never fade, a spark to keep her fire burning. And so as you head out into the world today, I invite you to look for the places where her memories inspire you to spread greater light greater hope, and greater love, where all shall become clear. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Amen. Early February of this year, my mother turned 92. She planned to do one of her favorite things, take her car out for a ride. She loved her car. She enjoyed the drive to Naramata, and she did it often. Her other favorite trip was to her church. When mom and dad retired to Naramata, they became members of the St. Saviour's community. As newcomers to the Penticton area, joining St. Saviour's proved to be a wonderful decision as they gained many good friends and became quite involved in church activities. Mom and dad were married 64 years. Luckily, our families were able to spend many anniversary celebrations with them. One of the best was their 60th over a weekend with them at Harrison, Hot Springs in 2012. With our children, we really had fun, dinners, and also enjoyed a night of dancing in the famous Copper Room. Mom enjoyed her travels, whether to Campbell River or North Vancouver, or bigger trips to Hawaii, Greece, or Italy. Mom loved telling us about her adventures. She was only 18, when alone, she traveled to the UK to visit relatives there. She would tell us about the cruise there and back, and she so enjoyed Liverpool, Ireland, and London. Mom was a brave, strong-willed, and independent woman. In later life, these characteristics sometimes saw her as stubborn and even difficult. But at her core, we knew she cared deeply for all of us in her family. <clears throat> um, thank you for coming, and even though there are only a few of us, we are some of the people that meant the most to Mum, and all the others are here in spirit. I had to wear my polka dot shirt today, because the day I wore it to visit Mum in the hospital, she said, do you expect me to count all those dots? <laughs> Which made me laugh. Dorothy Jean was a person who loved her children and her grandchildren and would do anything in the world for them. <clears throat> Mom loved to bake, especially her famous peanut butter cookies. Very often she would mail cookies or Rice Krispie squares to the kids because she knew they, they loved receiving them in the mail. <clears throat> Mom was quite a writer not just her penmanship, but also her knack for writing a good story or letter. When we were going through Mum's stuff recently, we discovered that she has been keeping track of her life in the form of letters. I'm hoping I'll be able to put them together one day in a book so we can remember her through her writings. Mum was a teacher of things, and I will miss our calls where I could ask her anything about recipes, cooking, sewing, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> wherever, she, wherever she went, she had a bag, bringing books, magazines, cookies, whatever she thought someone would like or need. She was always thinking about what she could do for her family and friends. 
She was a very strong and hardworking woman, and we, will all and we have all benefited from this over the years. Mom will always be a part of all of us, and we will always miss her and keep her in our hearts forever. This was uh, written by my sister Johanna, who can't be here today, living in Toronto. Upon hearing the news of Nana's passing, a flood of emotions came over me. Extreme sadness was all I could feel, and since I'm not able to be around my family right now, I had to think of something I could do to start to heal. So as my Nana loved to do, I started to write. I wrote down as many memories of her as I could remember. There's no right or wrong way to grieve, but this was an extremely helpful and healing for me. As I was writing, I started to cry, but as I continued, I felt myself getting stronger. Soon I was smiling, even laughing. My Nana was such a strong influence in our lives. She was always there for me, my brothers and my cousins. She was at our graduations, school events, dance recitals, sports tournaments, and countless holiday celebrations. Looking back, I feel unbelievably lucky that we had such an amazing Nana and Grandpa who got to spend so much time with. I have so many memories of Nana, one being the time when my brother and Curtis and I spontaneously danced to the YMCA with her in her condo, another being when we spent a long weekend in Harrison Hot Springs for my grandparents' 60th anniversary wedding. My family loves to gather and celebrate, and my Nana was always such a big part of those celebrations. We'll miss her very much. As I was writing, I also started to think about all the things that my Nana taught us. She was one of the strongest, sassiest, and funniest women I knew. She taught me that no matter what the circumstances, as long as you have a strong mindset, you can get through anything. We hold the power of positive thinking to control any outcome. I get to live my life with no fear, no hesitation, and all the confidence in the world because she was my Nana. When I think of her now, I can smile and know that she is now at rest with my grandpa, and they can both know that myself, my brother Curtis, my brother Ryan, my cousin Angela, and my cousin Dustin, all strong, independent people because we were fortunate enough to have the best grandparents in the entire world. She was always there for the big moments in our lives and lives so far, and she'll be in our hearts for the rest of them. We love you, Nana. One final thought that I want to share in a world where nothing makes sense and people get upset over everything. I will always remember that my Nana thought Shakira and Beyonce were so good and did an amazing job during the performance of the Super Bowl 2020. <laughs> We're going to continue with our prayers, and the response to the prayers today is, Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. God, grant to all who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and in righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care 
that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith, O God, to all who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and a certain hope, and the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Jean to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. Hear us, Lord. And so gathering our prayers together, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and the maker of all, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust 
and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Amen. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jean. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now, friends, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and all the days of your lives. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.